Hey everyone, welcome back. Here in the workshop today, I've got a fun little project modifying some bass flute keys. A customer recently approached us about moving some of the touch pieces on the foot joint closer to her D key, her third finger. So why don't you come in a little closer and take a look with me. This is the area that we have some interest in today. The client was saying that when she fingers the D down to the foot joint keys, down to low C, it's quite a stretch for her. And indeed, it's, it's actually a bit of stretch for myself, even though I have fairly, fairly large hands. So what we're going to do is work on bringing these three keys closer to our D. And as you can see, we have plenty of clearance under here to do that, so we can move all this stuff up. As foot joint cluster key modifications go, this one is fairly simple and straightforward. Each of these keys has plenty of clearance and doesn't need to be unsoldered here at the hinge and so forth. I'm just going to take the spatula area and cut them in half, cut them in the middle, and then separate them, put a distancing spacer in there, an extension piece that will silver solder in place. The first thing is we'll, we'll mark these to, to cut them. So I'm just looking for something that's approximately halfway. So I have a, a little jig here. This is, uh, comes with an X-Acto saw and I've modified it by cutting a, a window into it on the back side here. And that's so my keys can fit in like so. So I could use the miter to get a nice straight cut on each of my foot joint cluster keys, like so. We've made these little brass pieces to be a little wider than our widest key, a little taller than our tallest key, and we've got a three hundred thousandths step in here so that when we reinstall it in the key, we've now moved this touch piece three hundred thousandths north on the flute. And that's a dimension I got after consulting with the customer how far she wanted the cluster keys to move north. This little piece we made on the milling machines, and it's very simple. It's designed with this little platform on the bottom side, so it helps me get my key aligned so that everything's straight in the end. And then after we solder this in place, we'll go through a process of a little belt sanding, filing, and polishing to remove the, uh, this little platform in the bottom as well as the, the height and, and width on the part. It's really important to remove any burrs from the sawing process and to get this face very flat and perpendicular here. It's, it's got to fit this, this little extension piece just beautifully so we can get a nice clean solder joint. So I've made this little fixture just as a temporary put together thing to just file the pieces and I'll file both sides of each key so I get a nice flat perpendicular surface. I'm silver soldering the parts here. Spend whatever time is necessary to align the parts before soldering. Then the soldering goes like a breeze. So I'm going to uh, take down the height of the uh, the bridge and the, the width a little bit with the wheel. Blend that in nicely to the surface of the original key. Do a little bit of crowning at the top here, getting that nice pointed crest to the crown. We'll do some file work, a little bit more wheel work, then we'll take it to the buffing machine. So we've done our file and wheel work on the bridges, on the extension bridges, and we've got them blended in nicely with the rest of the uh, geometry of the keys. So 
the next step in the finishing process is uh, buffing them. We'll go with trip leafers and then rouge, and then we're ready to overplate these parts. We've got the instrument reassembled with the modified keys in place, and everything feels like a dream. I think the client's going to be very happy. Everything has been moved north towards the right hand on the body, and I think the proximity is great. All the clearances look fine, and everything is nice and fluid. It's very comfortable to finger this flute.